Hey guys, HW. I just alighted from the train at Wollstonecraft. Caught it up from North Sydney, which is only a couple of stops away. I'm going to head on a new adventure today. Show you something different, but also something similar at the same time. So we're going to go for a walk in a little bit. But let me give you the weather observations first. It's 25 degrees Celsius in Sydney today, which is 77 Fahrenheit. There's little to no wind, so I won't bother looking that up. But we're about to head down Shirley Road near Wollstonecraft Station. There's a couple of little shops that dot the outside of the station. One of them's this coffee shop up here. It's a delightful little coffee shop that one. I've had a nectar there before when I've jumped off the train here. We see a little bit of local action as we come through here. Local punters getting down to the station, getting off trains, heading to the coffee shop like those two ladies back there. I was looking around for the street sign to make sure I was on Shirley Road. So there we are. And that's where we're headed. We're headed down to Berry Island. Gonna have a look at a few things down at Berry Island. We'll certainly see some beautiful views of the harbour. Look at this delightful old home here. It's got some size on it. Number 46 Shirley Road. Wonder how many bedrooms it's got. Probably at least got seven or eight by the looks of it. Yeah, it's a grand old Federation home that one. Some of them, like that big old one over there, has been turned into a childcare centre. I oh, know that's the childcare centre next to it. Maybe it's a nursing home or something. Doesn't look like it's a a full home. Yeah, some sort of facility. Oh, here's a nice looking house here too. Now that's a different type of home as well. Um, I think I filmed one similar to that when I was out in Stratfield. This is a delightful old home as well, look at this. I had no idea there were such sizeable homes in in Wollstonecraft. Now look at this. We're sharing the sidewalk footpath with a bush turkey. Look at it. It's coming right up to me. Must think that I'm going to give it a few scraps to eat. That's a very tame one. Usually they scurry off pretty quickly. Yeah, look at look across the road here. Look at that grand old home. It's got some um, old-fashioned lead light windows as well.
Shirley Road. Oh, here's another one. Shirley Road, full of the old style homes. Tell you what, they'd set you back a pretty penny as well. Looking, looking in the tens of millions, I reckon, to have one of these suckers. This one on the corner. Looks like it's got commanding views. If I look over the top of it. Yeah, look at the size of this one. It's got a bit of a widow's walk up the top as well. I was about to say we get our first glimpse of the city through the trees there. even see Anzac Bridge through the in between the rooftop and the trees there a couple of lorikeets sounding off in the background yeah look at this even this cable street's got some delightful looking homes in it I hope my microphone sounds all right. The little, uh, the little dead cat on the end of it, a little micro one, has come off, and I'm sort of holding it on with my fingers. So hopefully it's not causing any distortion with the sound. This is all downhill, so you can probably hear my footsteps slamming on the footpath slash sidewalk. Oh, look at this house. This house got its own tennis court. And basketball court. Imagine having that so close to the city. Walk on the grass, that might stop my foots, footsteps coming up in the camera. These punters over here have been down to have a look at the view. Well, at the end of Shirley Road, I've come out onto this reserve on Berry Island. So I might as well start out here by taking a look over at uh, HMAS uh, Waterhen, which is an Australian naval base. Been there since World War II. And it's home to the Australian Navy clearance divers, or at least one of their bands. And uh, for you guys overseas, the Australian clearance divers are the same, or that was, how do I put this? They're similar to your Navy SEALs in a lot of the work that they do, but at the same time, they're not the same, if that, if that makes sense. So they do all of the, um, most of their operations are in the water as opposed to the Navy SEALs over in the US who take on a bit more of a combat role now and do a lot of um, like guerrilla warfare and stuff. These guys are more, more focused on the water. So clearing mines and obstacles and counter attack and stuff like that on the water. There's a few of their boats over there. I'll, I'll go for a walk along the end of this reserve here and then I'll point out something else. Hopefully you can hear the water lapping on the seawall here. That's the buildings in North Sydney you can see there. 
over the top of those trees and on the other side of the bay over there so we're on Berry Island here on the other side of the bay is what's called Ball's Head you probably can't see it but on that building there grey building just there they've got the name of the base HMAS Water Hen so about the Navy clearance divers so yeah they were similar to the Navy SEALs um, after World War II or during World War II after World War II and then uh, that sort of remained up until the Vietnam War and then after the Vietnam War they both took different paths the Australian naval clearance divers stayed focused around the water and the Navy SEALs took on a bit more of a combat role while we have a look across the bay and see the city skyline just there I don't know whether you can see that white boat with the yellow um, smokestack on the back but directly in front of it there's an old wharf and all that area over there used to be a, a coal loading and unloading station and that um, that area is called the coal loader it's a historical site now and I'll probably butcher the name but all of this land is originally from the Australian indigenous people the uh, Camaragal which looks like Camaragal so I'll probably butcher the name by saying Camaragal but I think I'm right so this is their land and over there and this is probably a video for another day but over on that headland over there there's actually a bunch of um, Aboriginal uh, carvings in the rock and when they built that coal loading station they uh, covered them up with a road and then I think in the 80s they ripped the road up so that everybody can enjoy the carvings again I didn't know there was a beach here let's have a look down on this beach hopefully I don't sink into the beach Oh, there's a couple of beaches look I don't know whether it'd be a real great place to come for a swim though because there's all these oyster shells on all the rocks they're like razor blades and slice your feet open all right I found this little pathway now on Berry Island so I'm going to walk up this and hope that it brings me out at the Berry Island lookout I can hear some young magpies screaming for their parents to provide them food This is typically what the bush trails look like in Australia. All been mostly worn out by f uh, footsteps. And then normally what they do is they throw in a few stairs and uh, wooden sleepers along the way to sort of keep it intact. better view through the trees at North Sydney up on the hill up there there's the local people there look camera goal oh what did they eat what's it tell us fruits nuts seeds tubers roots fleshy stems new shoots growing up they ate those 
uh, meat, seafood, possums, bandicoots, goannas, lizards, snakes, eels, wallabies and kangaroos, flying foxes, birds, insects and grubs. So they had a good diet of wild game and and some flora in there as well. Well, I think this is it. I think this is the lookout. Even though all of these, um, I don't know whether they're banksia trees or or what, are blocking the view a bit. But if I sneak around here, you can see Centre Point Tower through the trees. You can see the tower of Crown Casino there. And you can even in the distance you can see uh, the W Hotel. Look at those real Scandinavian looking buildings across the water there. The orange, red and yellow ones. Totally out of place in Oz. But they look good. Across the way over there you can see the uh, Peninsula of um, Birch Grove and, and Balmain. And I'm sort of looking for, but I think directly ahead there we can see those green buildings. I think that's Goat Island there. Ah, oh, there goes one of the ferries. My long sight's not that great that I can see the name of it. Now we're finished with that lookout, let's get down this little path and see where this goes. Oh yeah, there's a staircase to get down here as well. I wonder what the point of these staircases are. Is it to get you down to the water's edge? Is it to get you down for fishing? Or certainly wouldn't be swimming with all these shells everywhere. Don't really have the shoes for it, but let's get out onto this sandstone and see if we can catch a better view further up. And what happens? I almost trip over straight away. Trying to hang on to the camera at the same time. I don't want to land down into these bloody oyster shells, I tell you what. Be absolutely shredded. Yeah, there's a bit bit more of an unobstructed view up the harbour. There's that coal loading site over there. Just left the wharf the way it is. I looked at I looked at a little video before I came down here of the coal loading site in action and yeah, a lot of coal loaded and unloaded off that side over the years. Apparently the people that lived around here back then hated the noise. It was pretty loud. Go a bit further this way and we can see St. Leonard's. So those buildings up there, St. Leonard's. Tell you why it's quite warm in the sun. So I changed my mind and had a quick squeeze at the direction of the wind. It's uh, 
coming from the southeast at 20 kilometers an hour so you know what that means when it's coming from the southeast it's coming off the ocean that's why it's so humid walking back along a different path to get back to Shirley Road or at least I <laughs> hope this goes back to Shirley Road I don't know it's been a long time since I come down here I know a lot of the a lot of the uh, Europeans and a lot of the uh, uh, Japanese love to go bushwalking in Australia when they come here. So this is another little little walk that you can go on when you come out here. I think most of them like the more the longer distances I think they like to get down to the Royal National Park down south or get out into the Blue Mountains they've done a good job clearing out all the bush here though in the old days you'd come down here and this would be all full of weeds mixed in with the Australian native plants in trees it looks like they've done a lot of work to get it all out so you would have come down in the old days in this place it would have been all full of lantana and everything they've ripped it all out there's a bit more about the local people there Oh, it says there's some carvings here. Oh yeah, there is too, look. I don't know whether you can see in the rocks there. But there's carvings that have been chipped out with various tools. What does it say it is? It's an open circle with a boomerang shape around it. And then apparently they, they dug out that hole there for fresh water, to collect fresh water. So there you go. Betcha for that fresh water pool, I betcha they would have had to compete with some of the rock wallabies and other animals back in those days. A maritime vessel following me down the path on the water down there. Wonder what he's doing. Wonder whether he's um, making sure people are not illegally moored down there, I guess. That's definitely what he's doing. He's checking on all the moorings. He's checking his iPad to see that they're up to date with their payments. Looks like he's um, paying particular attention to this little blue yacht down here. He's taking a photo of it. They must be late with their payment. There it is. 
There he is. New South Wales Maritime on patrol. Could I pay your rent on the water? So here we go, this is where they've like used the natural rocks as part of the trail and then they just whack on a couple of sandstone steps on the end. That's a typical bush track in Australia. And then they whack in these sleepers. So we've seen the New South Wales Maritime and now we've got the local council down here as well. I'll sneak back onto this track here that I was on. A little ute down here and there's some um, some guys from North Sydney Council. Take another glimpse of Berry Island and the water city in the distance nice breeze picking up down here and the local garbage collections down here too they're all down here stopped at this little path on the way up Shirley Road it's called the Gore Cove Track. No pussy cats allowed on this track. Be interesting to see how they stop them. Here's the map of where we were on Berry Island. So we walked all the way to the end. Just there. Oh yeah, look, see? There's definitely Banksia trees that we saw on the end. And it's got a little sugar glider. It's one of the animals that inhabit the island. I like this. <laughs> Wollstone Craft. Craft Station. One and a half kilometres. Easy. It's like a steep hill. <laughs> it's not easy at all. I'll try to give you sort of an idea. By holding the camera straight but it's like a gradient like that all the way up the hill by the time I get to the top I'll be able to wring out my clothes and collect a couple of glasses of water I reckon all right coming back from Berry Island just coming out of North Sydney station so I thought I might as well film it seeing that we're here Film a little bit in the Greenwood Plaza as I make my way up the road. All the shops in the arcade off the station all open except for that one. So we've filmed down the bottom here before, so let's film up the top, eh? Up on the top level. Baker's Delight's got its Easter bunnies up on the counter.
lady here making dumplings. Tin Tai Fung, plenty of them around the world. It's a real chain, that one. Oh, that's a that's a justice over the piece there. They've set up a little store. Get your legal documents signed there by JP. I haven't seen that before. The Mad Hatter down there. So, there's still a few fashion outlets open on the top level. There's a nice breeze blowing through here. Just so, that a historical looking building over there, that's the Greenwood Hotel. Go in there for a few lagers. That's going to do it for today as we look up the Pacific Highway. Thanks for coming on the little skirt today. See you in the next vid. The video is over.